Until you do right by me, everything you think about is gonna crumble. Don't do it, Miss Seal. Don't trade places with what I've been through. to discuss her uh, blockbuster film called Impreza. And we, the viewers, have a few questions that uh, I'd like to go over with you today. Sure. Um, one of the questions is, if the audience walked away from Impreza, um, what one impression would you want them to really get from the film? OK. Um, well, Impreza is story about entrepreneurs. So it's a short, silent film about East African entrepreneurs in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, and we tried to make the story as realistic as possible. So it is fictitious, but it's a story about people who decided that they wanted to be their own boss and found a way to do it. So the concept that I would hope people walk away with is that if they have an idea or a business proposition or something that they feel like um, they are capable of doing, or or they think is worth experimenting with, mm -hmm. then the risk of uh, failing at that or not having that turn out exactly how they planned mm -hmm. uh, will always be less than the feeling of never having to explore it or try it, because that is a terrible feeling to have, and um, and life's too short. Life's too short to not try things that you feel like you should want. That's like the tagline for the movie. It's like to try is to live. That's the the mantra. Yeah. Oh, that may, that's, that's a very good point. Yeah. Uh, one thing I noticed about the film, which I thought was fascinating, is the fact that you, uh, the film both has subtitles in English and also to Green Bay. Um, mm -hmm. Why did the film have both, uh, both, both subtitles? Languages? Yeah, both languages. <laughs> so the uh, Impressa is a story about a young Eritrean woman, Eritrean American, mm -hmm. who's born and raised in the city in San Francisco, and her parents came from Eritrea. Mm. in the 1980s. So this is a story of a first generation um, woman who has the experience of a bilingual household. So at home, she would hear Tigrinya. She would hear her parents talking to her, even if you know they, they speak English as well, but that they're most comfortable in Tigrinya, and that is definitely what they want their kids to understand. And so their household is filled with that language. But this child is growing up in San Francisco, so as soon as she leaves that house, she's going to hear English everywhere she goes. School, work, Muni. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, mm -hmm. actually there's more languages than just English out there, but mm -hmm. in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. But the point is that it's a bilingual identity, and so the film had to be conveyed in two languages um, that are most close to her her upbringing, um, which would be Tigrinya in English, and also it's just aesthetically compelling to see. Um, Tigrinya and English written side by side on the screen when you're telling a story about air trains in, in the Bay Area, you know? Yeah, and to yeah. see like Oakland written in, in Tigrinya is wow. just, it's probably not something you translate on a daily basis, but I think that it adds a, like a, a feeling of uh, relevance to people who are watching the film who might be interested or have an experience in both cultures. Now, are you that, that girl in the film that, you know, lived in a household and spoke to Green, you know, where you brought up yeah. speaking to Green yourself? Uh, yes. Well, I, I was that girl in the sense that it was around me, mm -hmm. but as you get older, in my experience, you start to lose language a little, little, little more as you grow up. So I can definitely mm -hmm. 
speak it, I can understand it, I can respectfully greet an elder in Tigrinya, you know, mm -hmm. but it's not my go-to language. Um, and so actually another reason why I wanted to make a film and have both languages is that I really wanted to become more literate in Tigrinya. And so I was I'm learning how to read and write Tigrinya right now. And the wow. film was a great uh, like supplement to my <laughs> education mm -hmm. because I was learning how to write um, words and concepts that I probably wouldn't be speaking on a daily basis. But when I was growing up, I was that kid who had their parents yelling at them in a different language. Wow. <laughs> or encouraging them in a different language, too. <laughs> my parents that's, were nice. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Now, some of the viewers, and, and even myself, we were blown away by the music. And, um, you know, the question is, you know, how did you go about selecting the music for that film, for your film? Yeah. Um, well, so you, you, you saw something. You know that the music is all like old East African, Eritrean, Ethiopian, funk and jazz mm, from the 1960s, 70s, a little bit of the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I picked the music in the film that I was exposed to either through growing up in my parents' household because they had a very open-minded um, musical um, range. So we listen to like blues, jazz, disco, R&B, lots of Ethiopian music, Eritrean music, Sudanese music. Wow. So a lot of the songs were either my, my mom or dad's favorite songs when I was growing up or um, they were music that I found through re-releases that are being pressed on vinyl and also through CDs. So a lot of the music in the film, almost all the music in the film is um, a re-release from Ethiopiques, which is a French music um, label series mm, that nice. re-releases and archives uh, Eritrean and Ethiopian music from back in the day, 60s through 70s. So it was great because Ethiopics partnered with uh, us for Impressa and gave us permission to use the music for our film. And it was great to have their support because we really needed to have the old original recordings so we could tell a modern day story, a modern day story with the, the old music to show the clashing of <laughs> generations or just the melding of generations. There doesn't always have to be a clash, which is also another point of the film is that we can coexist and we have to coexist because you have multi-generational households growing up in America. I love that. Yeah. I can I can envision you selling uh, your soundtrack of, of your movie as well as yeah. uh, the actual <laughs> movie. You know, I think both of those would do extremely well. It would be because great. Because you're going to, because like you said, you're going to grab um, different audiences, which is amazing. You don't have that with a lot of films, I've yeah. noticed. Um, one thing also is, you know, what do you consider your inspirations? Or, you know, is it a specific, any specific person or any specific idea or anything what yeah. what gives you the inspiration specifically with this film well I would say I mean, inspiration is like everywhere there's a lot there's, there's too much inspiration especially in a place like San Francisco but I, if I had to like neatly answer that question I would say there's different types of inspiration so there is like the inspiration that comes from my peers or from people who are also in my in my boat of being first generation anything and there are lots of artists who are trying to find ways to merge both of their worlds and identities into art um, mm -hmm. like the first one I think of is the Elias Mal he's a director and writer he actually had a film also in the Black Film Festival mm -hmm. called Against the Grain and his film came out years before mine but uh, I went to school with him at UCLA and it was nice. just nice to see somebody who took their art seriously right off the bat and to showcase similar projects around the same time to me is a great inspiration and it makes me want to do more mm -hmm. because it's nice to have people um, to keep you company when you're doing experimental stuff like this and, and it's nice to, to see their work too. Nice. And then there's also just writers that I look up to, musicians that I look up to. The musicians that we use in the film are a big inspiration for me. Um, like Gurma Biene or Mahmed Ahmed and Mulati Osake, they're all musicians that have music in the film. Nice that have been around for a while, it made a lot of good music, um, and I, I just wanted to find a way to appreciate their music and to spread the work that they put in, to spread their music to my generation because it's so good <laughs> and there just has to be more venues for people to access it. And, and it's perfect for storytelling, it's really dramatic music, there's lots of horns and flutes and it makes you feel like you're watching a movie, so I just made a movie music. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I, I really love it.
Salam. My name is Sephora Waldu. I am the writer and director of Impressa, a short silent film on East African entrepreneurs. Uh, you can learn more about the film at www.impressafilm.com. Thank you, Anile, and have a good day. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. <laughs>